tag them, monitor them. They haven't logged in. They haven't deployed. They haven't responded. Member at risk, Jared. Member at risk. Five reasons you have high churn in your product. Now, if you're not a SaaS business founder, churn is the amount of people that cancel every month. You know, I have entrepreneurs reach out to me when they have like a $200 lifetime value of a customer, and if they're charging 100 bucks a month, then that means it's two months and the person leaves. I also get people that have a 10 month lifetime value, where essentially if they're at a 10 or 12% uh, churn every month, the customers, imagine this, every 10 months, they gotta go find 100% new customers just to even keep even keel. It's crazy. In the best products, I wanna share a strategy. I'm gonna talk to you the five reasons that customers are churning, but if you do it right, you literally can have a product that has an 8% annualized churn. Most people are at 8% per month, and I'm like, hey, where are you at? And they're like, oh, and I'm like, man, that's crazy. Now, I know this firsthand because when I was building my company, Flowtown, it was an email marketing SaaS product uh, that integrated social data and emails. And I remember six months into the product, we were starting to run a report. Because in the early days, you don't have a lot of data. And when I pulled the report to share it with my co-founder, Ethan, we literally had a 12% per month churn. So the scenario I just shared with you, a nine-month lifetime value, did not create an incredible company. Now the good news is we actually built a marketing channel to support that, so we were growing every month, 20, 30%. But if you kind of looked at the top line growth and the churn, um, you would have seen a huge uh, fall off on the underside of that chart. So we sat down and we started looking through this and it was through the actions I'm gonna share with you today that we really dialed in what was missing, what was broken in our product to th turn things around where we eventually got it to about a 15% annualized churn. Not great, not the eight, but definitely a huge difference from where we started to where we ended up. So the first thing you need to understand is you gotta have great customer service. I know a lot of you guys are like, that sounds so trivial, Dan, of course, great customer service. Here's what I wanna say is it's about responsiveness. You know, one of the things we did is every time somebody would sign up for the product, we would literally, we'd ask them, we had a little checkbox and it said, click here for free phone support. Because in that sign up form, they would give us their number. And we had two people, technically they were sales, they didn't have quotas, but they had a certain level of uh, expectations, they were competing against each other. And their whole job was just to call customers and make sure that they understood the product, they understood how to get deployed, and they had a great customer experience level. And I think that is just responsiveness. Have you ever emailed a company with a challenge and nobody replied? Or two days later, I recently signed up for this like obscure domain, you know, like those weird dot whatevers. And it was like this company in probably Europe or whatever, because one of those small countries. And it was three day back and forth interactions. I'd email them, I'd wait for three days. Those come, I ended up canceling the domain. I was like, I'd rather find somebody else that I can feel comfortable with than continue to deal with this. And they could have had me for a customer for decades if they had better customer service. So that's number one, make sure that's dialed in. Two is ensure that your onboarding experience, especially if you do a free trial to paid conversion, like a 14 day free trial, you need to make sure that your onboarding experience gives the customer exactly what they expect and need. D dials them right into what I call the core value of your product so that they get activated. If they don't get activated, they're literally, they might stick around for, for a few months. Many people when they sign up for products, they have the need today, but they're working on solving it over a few months and they're willing to wait and pay what I call the tax of a monthly fee knowing that they're gonna jump back in. But as soon as they realize that the product isn't as good as they thought it was or they find an alternative, they'll just cancel it. So if you can get somebody deployed and activated in that first trial, you're gonna have an incredible uh, reduced churn on your hands. So number two is just make sure that people get uh, onboarded. Three is recurring value. As much as you want people to pay every month, recur every month. You're like, every month I want you to pay me money, pay me money, pay me money. The onus is on you as the company founder to make sure that that product delivers value, recurring value every month. That was the huge problem in our company, Flowtown, is that we had this great product hook. We got them in with the social data on the email addresses. We even had a few templates that we gave them, but we didn't give them a reason to continue setting up and automating their, essentially, outreach on social media for their customers and their marketing. So we had to look at the product, make sure that the, the product delivered reoccurring value. So if you have that issue, if you have like a two month kind of value and people churn because they kind of get the need, they solve it and then they move on, you gotta look at what other features can you create 
create to really build that kind of value. Here's a great question to ask yourself and your team, uh, especially for your customers, is what do you, so I'm asking a customer, what do you do three minutes before and after you use our product? Because what they do, those actions, will help me build a more uh, broad and attractive and ongoing value stream to my customers. Number four is just a lack of customer success. You know, I really think that there's kind of three core phases to the product. There's attract, um, convert, and then expand. Attract is just getting them to the site in the first place. Convert is making sure that the free trial or getting into your product or the demo does really well to get them as a customer. And then expand is not even just retain them. It's literally look at opportunities to expand their product usage. Maybe there's certain features that you guys have that they don't even know about and they're not using. So your job is actually to map out all your customers and ensure that they deploy and ingrain and leverage the features you've built to get more value from the product, okay? Now, the fifth reason people are churning is for natural causes. And you need to understand that these are real things. Um, number one is just credit card details you know, expiring, right? I don't know if you've ever dealt with that, but it's literally, for most companies, it could be like four or 5% of your customer base every month that it's just their credit card details expire and you gotta get them to update it. So that's normal. The other one is they're downgrading. So they might have been using a lot of features. They had a big company. Maybe their company kind of downsized or they've kind of found another way to solve the problem. So they've downgraded their feature set. So that's, you know, negative churn on the revenue side. And then finally, it's just businesses die. You know, I remember talking to the CEO of Constant Contact, Gail. And she was like, you know, the challenge for us being in the SMB space, or what she called the, the very small business, VSBs, uh, is that, you know, there's a huge 8, 10% a year uh, kind of death rate of just small businesses. So if you're in that market, you've got to combat, if you're trying to get 8% churn per year, it's going to be tough because you're going to get just companies, you know, going out of business. So those are the five reasons. Now, I want to give you a tip, okay? This is huge. The way to kind of protect yourself is actually to tag customers as MAR, okay? And MAR is member at risk. So it's very simple for you. You understand what an engaged customer looks like. These are your best customers, how they use the product, how often they log in, what features they use. You can literally just write some simple code to monitor that, and if somebody doesn't log in for two weeks, if somebody is not deploying the features, if they signed up and they haven't um, used the product a whole lot, you can flag them as MAR and then have your customer success team reach out to them to make sure they go from a member at risk to a high retained customer. That is your opportunity. Number one, make sure your customer service is rocking. Two, your onboarding delivers the core value your product promises. Three, make sure that your reoccurring value actually is delivered and perceived from your customer on a monthly basis. That's a product issue. Four, make sure that you have a great customer success team so that people not only retain but expand in their usage. And five, just understand there's natural causes. You can do your best to improve them, but at the end of the day, there are gonna be companies that go out of business and downsize, and that's part of building a SaaS business. So as per usual, I hope this video finds you well. I also wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for other tips and strategies on how to start and grow your business. I'd also encourage you to join my newsletter where I share community contests, exclusive invites, and other free entrepreneurial training. And if you're ready to get going, I've got two videos queued up for you. I'll see you next week.